What's up, everybody? I'm Taylor Amarante, and this is Earthquakes Exclusive, a show designed to give you, the fans, all of the behind the scenes access at the MLS's back tournament kicking off in Orlando. It is exciting times as our San Jose Earthquakes kick off their initial match of the tournament in less than 24 hours. Who are we taking on? Well, none other than defending MLS Cup champions, Seattle Sounders FC, presented by Intermedia. So make sure to plan your Friday night accordingly. Now the San Jose Earthquakes have been in Orlando, Florida for just over two weeks. And I know what you're thinking. What have these guys been up to? Well, we caught up with Quakes defender Osvaldo Alanis to get answers to that very question on our first segment, A Day in the Life, presented by Clover. Hola, hola, hola a todos. Soy Osvaldo Alanis y les voy a enseñar un poco de lo que es un día por acá. Les, les enseño un poco de lo que tengo aquí. Me vine bien preparado porque vamos a estar más de un mes por acá, entonces me traje pues, varias cosas, mis libros, que retomé el tema de la lectura, aunque si bien a veces tenemos por ahí tiempo, pero bueno, tengo aquí mis libros. Este por la mitad, este es un libro que vas haciendo diario, y este me lo acaban de regalar, igual que el de Ponte Chingón, que es de Tito Galvez, también un emprendedor, que es muy bueno, estoy haciendo el curso con él. También compré recién mi agenda, tengo mi agenda física también, porque tenía la del celular, pero dicen que es mejor escribir. Y bueno, aquí traigo mi compu, que es donde hago también los cursos, y de repente pendientes que tengo, enviar mail o algo. Eh, también tengo, bueno, una libreta que es más digital, pero esta es como más anotaciones, una libreta que me da la mi novia, pero es los diferentes cursos que voy haciendo, pues diferentes anotaciones o ejercicios que voy teniendo, pues también la tengo para, para ir anotando cosas. Para ir avanzando en cosas que siempre me han gustado mejorar y creo que todo en la vida así es, que aparte del fútbol hay cosas en las que puedes sumar para ayudarle al fútbol. Entonces en eso estamos y por mi balón también, siempre por ahí me acompaña. Lo diseñaron para nosotros, bueno tenemos aquí como una zona donde a veces desayunamos un desayuno rápido y diferentes cosas, barritas, fruta mermelada, crema, maní. Pero bueno, esto es para cuando entramos muy temprano. Desayunamos aquí. Y pusieron todo, pues ahorita ya lo hemos ocupado un poco, pero está todo lo que es para poder jugar PlayStation o juegos de video. Pusieron también esa máquina, hay un juego acá de, para jugar, de dos finales para estar a gusto. Y también nos pusieron unos juegos de mesa, como estos. No hemos utilizado muchos, pero bueno, aquí están. Compramos este, este no lo teníamos, pero lo compramos nosotros entre todos los jugadores porque nos gusta lo de los dardos y se, bueno, pues, se ha puesto bueno, hacemos ahí unos, unos torneos, aquí tenemos nuestra tablita donde anotamos ahí quién va ganando y aparte pues tienes una buena vista que al final también está a gusto para poder estar aquí. Great to hear from Alanis. Hopefully he's got one of those long range free kick goals up his sleeve for tomorrow's opener. So during these tough times, hunger is a real challenge facing our San Jose communities. But the Quakes and the Quakes Foundation are all in in the fight against food insecurity. Over the next year, we will be donating $740,000 to local organizations and causes and over 740 volunteer hours. Let's find out more about Pledge 74 on this week's Community Spotlight presented by Wells Fargo. The Pledge 74 initiative is the San Jose Earthquakes response to the COVID crisis. Prior to the crisis, food security was no joke in San Jose and is a growing problem. One in four families and people, our own neighbors, struggled with food insecurity, and that was before the COVID crisis hit. The food need in this area is very great. There are families working two and three jobs who still can't find enough money at the end of the month. Do I pay the rent or do I feed my kids? Our brothers, our sisters are suffering right now. During normal times, 40% of all food produced is wasted. 25% of that 40% would feed every food insecure individual on our planet. So since uh, the pandemic hit, 
uh, we saw a significant increase in food insecurity in Santa Clara County, especially in San Jose. Our sandwich orders have increased, our hot food program has increased, and the good offset to that is we have volunteers that have never come to visit us before. Since March 19th, we have produced and distributed over 450,000 meals, and it's not enough. We need volunteers, we need support. Pledge 74 is the San Jose Earthquakes and the Quakes Foundation response to a growing problem in our community. We're challenging Quakes fans, players, staff, and Quakes Nation at large to get involved. We're gonna commit $740,000, we're gonna do 740 hours of community service, and we're gonna donate 7.4% of all of our media to education and awareness around our community. Each month we'll be working with different partners across the Bay Area, South Bay specific, from food banks like Second Harvest, Martha's Kitchen, Hunger at Home, to community organizations like the African American Community Services Agency or United Farm Workers, who are already on the ground working with our most vulnerable neighbors to make a difference. So we'll have volunteer opportunities as well as fundraising, chances for Quakes Nation to get involved. You can learn more at pledge74.org, register for a volunteer shift, or learn more about some of our fundraising opportunities. When this is over, you'll remember the ones who were there with you. Fitness is, was, and always will be about keeping a routine. And the best routines in life did, do, and always will make time for enjoying yourself. Welcome back. Last week, we brought you some pretty sweet behind the scenes footage of the guys as they made their journey from San Jose to Orlando. Now that they've got their feet placed firmly on the ground, let's see what the guys are up to on this week's Sights and Sounds. I've asked a bunch of people if I should better Guys, water. Take time to drink water. Yeah, 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 yeah. It didn't move. Yeah, yeah. Second game. Second game. Second game. It's worth it. It'll be worth it. It's tough, huh? Looks like training is really heating up just in time for tomorrow's big matchup. Let's catch up with head coach Matias Almeida to see what his experience in Orlando has been like so far in this next clip presented by Intermedia. Eh, fuimos el primer equipo que llegó a Orlando. Ya hace hoy seis días que estamos y bueno hemos podido entrenarnos como equipo y estamos contentos solo por eso. Bueno, va a haber dificultades, va a haber dificultades en, en, en la parte técnica, va a haber dificultades en, la, en, en, en las estrategias. Eh, para un futbolista estar tres meses sin jugar al fútbol es mucho tiempo. Eh, tres meses sin poder entrenarse con sus compañeros, tres meses eh, sin tocar el balón. Y bueno, creo que trataremos de que se disimule lo menos posible, pero 
evidentemente todos los equipos van a sufrir esta parte. No, es vivir todo el día para pensando y visualizando eh, y deseando llegar a, al éxito mayor. Eh, el formato de este torneo parece un mundial, parece una Copa América, parece Juegos Olímpicos, por el hecho de que estás mucho tiempo eh, encerrado, con, con, con solo viviendo de fútbol y bueno, son momentos en los cuales se extraña la familia, son momentos de que, en el cual tenés que pensar solo en el fútbol, se juntan un montón de cosas con esto de la pandemia, con, bueno, es, <coughs> es extraño, estamos en un lugar que se llama Disney, donde habitualmente reina la felicidad de los niños, de las niñas, de las familias, y hoy Disney, digamos, eh, Mini y Mickey van a estar esperando que ruede el balón, porque les vamos a dar felicidad desde ese lugar. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Californians are coming together to keep our communities safe by sheltering in place. But as millions face economic hardship, PG&E wants you to know about our care program, which can help customers reduce energy bills by at least 20%. Sign up is easy, and you don't need proof of income to start the process. To find out more about CARE and other programs to lower bills, text CARE to 20283 or visit pge.com slash CARE. No matter what's ahead, you count on family. Northern California families count on Honda. Fuel efficient, packed with high-tech safety features, with legendary dependability you can pass down from one generation to the next. And right now, you can count on exceptional deals on every new Honda. But blink, and you'll miss it. Honda is family. Ask anyone who owns a Honda. Welcome back. Knowing that tomorrow is our opening match of the tournament against Seattle Sounders FC, presented by Intermedia, we knew we couldn't let Quakes fans go into the match unprepared. So we've got Quakes analyst Daniel Slayton and former player Marvell Wynn here to break down the ins and outs of the match. Take a look. Hello, Earthquakes fans. It is nice to be back, kind of. I am Danielle Slayton alongside Marvell Wynn, and we are going to preview the MLS is back tournament from outside the bubble. So Marvell, question for you, what to expect out of a tournament like this in such a unique time, in such a unique situation? Well, first of all, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. Um, hope you're doing well out there. Um, in a tournament like this, I would expect players to kind of come out firing on all cylinders. I mean, it's been so long since these guys have been able to play in a competitive game against, you know, actual competition like this and it's a fun experience i mean being in a hotel it kind of brings you back to the club days of you know like surf cup nomads nike dallas cup and things like that so it's also it's pretty exciting and i think it's going to rely heavily on the managers themselves because there's going to be a lot of games or a short amount of time so it's not just put your best players out there and have them go all out for each game you're really going to have to pick and choose kind of play that chess game to make sure that they match up perfectly well against the opponent and I expect Matias Almeida to have these guys locked in. He is a, a manager who likes to have control. The Earthquakes have been in Orlando longer than any other team. And so I know that they're going to be focused. And with the disruptive man marking style that they like to play, I think that could go bode well over the course of tournaments where games are going to come fast and furious. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, speaking of uh, Matias Almeida and his Earthquake squad, who do you expect to, to have a real impact in this tournament from the Quakes? I'm going to think about the guys that were very strong staples in the years past. So I'm thinking not only about Christian Espinosa, but I think um, Magnus is going to do very well. I think he's one of those players that um, Matias really likes and relies on for corner kicks, free kicks, and just in the uh, flow of the game to get on the ball and to really help things go forward. As well as Jackson Ewell, I think he had a very, I think he had a breakout year last year. And if he can get the ball in the back and look at those um, penetrating balls to the forwards, I think he's going to be very, very disruptive. And I think it's going to look very well for the Quakes. 
for me, I'm really looking for Christian Espinoza and Vaco to, to have a big role. Quite frankly, somebody's got to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net aside from Chris Wondolowski. I think that's going to be key for the earthquakes and you've got designated players out on the wings. Those guys have really got to find a way to, to make an impact, I think, and serve balls into the box and get on the end of them in terms of production on the scoring sheet. So I'm looking for those guys. Finally, Seattle, the first game that the Earthquakes have. What do we know about Seattle? What can we expect or anticipate in that first match? They're going to come offline. I mean, I, I can see Seattle um, taking this game, this very first game, first game of the tournament. I mean, even going back to, you know, World Cup tournaments or whatever tournaments that you usually uh, focus on, they always want to set the tone early. Just come out strong, come out hard, really send a message to everybody else within the tournament and just say, you know what, we're coming here to win. So I think it's just going to be just all out right from the beginning. Um, a lot of possession and a lot of just balls going forward, trying to penetrate through the back line. We know that Seattle is a team that does well in tournaments, right? They have snuck into the MLS Cup playoffs and have gone on to make it to the finals defending MLS Cup champions. So we know that they're a team that knows how to organize and build momentum, as you mentioned, uh, throughout the course of a tournament. Keep your eye on Raul Rui Diaz. Keep your eye on Jordan Morris. I thought he was somebody who was really gaining momentum, and I was looking to see how he was going to play and execute throughout 2020. So keep an eye on him. But the big question for me, they have two new uh, center backs. So certainly something that the Earthquakes can look to exploit uh, defensively against the, the Seattle Sounders and trying to beat Stefan Fry, who has been steady Eddie in the back for them for many years. So exciting that the Quakes are back. Great to see you, Marv. We'll be doing this throughout the course of this tournament. Quakes fans, make sure you stay tuned on Friday. The Quakes are back in action in 2020. You look like a flower Each and every way Welcome back. Jackson Ewell has quickly become a household name for Quakes fans across the Bay Area. And that didn't happen without a lot of hard work on the training pitch. Let's see if it's more of the same in Orlando. Well, I think first it's, it's nice to be back with the group, um, you know, not being able to train for the three and a half months and then the couple weeks when everyone else was able to train and us not being able to do anything besides individual, you know, being together with the group I think is, is really fun and enjoyable just to be in that aspect again. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, the ranking the uh, reigning MLS champions, you know, and they kind of gave us a defeat towards the end of the year last year. So we're looking, really looking forward to this game and, and trying to get some, some revenge on it. I mean, I think, you know, midfield, um, especially because there is so much running and the, and the temperature is going to play a big factor throughout the tournament and the games are so close together, um, we'll need everyone on, on the team, you know, and maybe some players will play in different positions just because of certain aspects. Um, but I think, um, the depth of, uh, of our team is, is really good and I think that's that's one of our strengths. You know, for me in particular, you know, the friendship level that you have off the field, I think, um, emulates towards onto the field. You know, you, you really understand, you know, personality and, and how someone acts and off the field. And when you get close together like we are as a group, you can kind of translate onto the field and you see certain movements half a second earlier and um, some of that trust, like you were saying. It's, it's very easy to see and, and evident and, um, you know, it's just fun at the end of the day, you know, when when you have such a good group that's that's together and um, everyone's lifting each other up, you know, if you make a mistake or not, um, everyone's there to support you and, and keep moving forward. I don't know about you guys, but seeing that footage of Jackson on the training field makes me never want to skip leg day again. Now, it's no secret that the Quakes training staff has a lot of characters, none more charismatic than Guido Bonini, the strength and conditioning coach. We asked Quakes players to describe him in one word in this week's edition of Quakes and Answers, presented by Jack in the Box. First word that comes to my head is loud. <laughs> hey, let's go! Pinocchio. Opposite. Annoying. <laughs> nah. Annoying in a good way. <laughs> Pushing us. <laughs> 
honestly, the guy is, I would say, motivational. He has the ability to flip a switch and get us motivated, get us uh, pumped up for whatever we have to do. It's pretty incredible how far away he can be on the field, but how easily you can still hear him. Because every time he's trying to talk in English, he's saying the opposite of the words. I mean, like, it's like haircut, right? He's saying cut hair. <laughs> Soldier or Pinocchio. If there is press conference, he says conference press. <laughs> uh, if guys are feeling tired or not in the mood, he can flip a switch and get us going pretty quickly. So the guy's motivational. A lot goes into getting the players ready to take the pitch. On this week's edition of Match Ready, presented by Sutter Health, we caught up with the Quakes' Director of Health and Performance, Derek Lawrence, to see how his role has changed during the pandemic. I am Derek Lawrence. I am the Director of Health and Performance. Well, I got rid of my day-to-day -day job for a while since we weren't coming in and working with the players. Uh, most of the time was spent at home working with uh, the performance staff, trying to come up with ways to be creative to get at-home workouts and uh, make sure the guys are getting the work in that they need. In order to return to train, we've had a lot of guidance from Major League Soccer on how to uh, develop protocols to really ensure the safety of the players and the staff members that are here. And so we take all the proper precautions, cleaning down in between uh, repetitions that they may be on the field with certain equipment. And then obviously we're just staying out of the indoors and just trying to be out in the open air and enjoy all the wind and uh, you know keep ourselves safe. Our Sutter Health physicians have played a major role in the uh, return to training protocols. Um, they've also aided us in getting some uh, initial COVID-19 testing. Uh, they worked hand in hand with the respiratory clinic of Sutter Health and really gave us a good opportunity to get everyone tested before we got back on the field. And, uh, and it was just very nice and just the, the partnership that we have with them for the past couple of years has been phenomenal. And I can't thank Dr. Gale, Dr. Oyang, even Dr. Eklund enough for all their help. And uh, the short-term goals for us is getting the players back to full fitness as quickly as possible, but as safe as possible. And we do that you know, by using a number of uh, modalities uh, from the performance side. We have a force plate. We'll have the guys jump uh, at some point so we can look to see if there's any asymmetries. We are using our StatSport GPS quite a bit. Um, we're using that to track their lows, their high speed distance, distance, you know, a number of metrics that we have historical data on, so we know how to progressively return them back to that full fitness. And so we will, you know, look at ways to set and prescribe uh, lows each week, and we will increase that as we go to make sure that they can get back to full fitness as safe as possible. Well, that does it for this week's episode of Earthquakes Exclusive. Make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight because tomorrow, the quakes are back. I'm Taylor Amarante, Force of Quakes.